Hi CryptoCars Fandango here. Sorry I've neglected you guys for quite a while. I had a really busy weekend, even really busy busier day today as well. But I'm um, just going to make a quick update video for you. State of play at the moment. So on space pool, it's reporting 119.2 terabyte of space. I've got 135 um, TIB um, on the farm at the moment. We'll be having a look at that in a bit. Um, and Earnings still creeping up, 6.4 in the pool and the two blocks. Still not one another block, don't know what's going on there. I've investigated and made changes to drive um, sleep settings and things like that. Still not managing to see any uh, anything come through. So I um, just have to sit sit tight. And uh, you know, as um, some people have commented in the chat, it could be down to the increase in net space because it has, it has flown up quite considerably but um, daily earnings on that 135 TIB well 30, 0.033792 yesterday which isn't brilliant at all um, it, it seems to be way below expectation but what can you do um, might be a little bit better today not sure I've checked all the um, Partials coming through in that, 100%, no issues at all. So everything is working as it should. Um, not sure what the reasons are for um, you know, not being able to win a block or not yet. But I'm um, just going to have to be patient, I suppose. So if we have a look at the, the price today, well, that's recovered quite considerably over the past few days. Um, we're back up to, well, it did, it did creep over £20 today, but um, it's dropped down to 1948 as of now, £19.48. Um, and you can definitely see something is changing um, if you look at the sort of um, trading that's going on. Um, it could be to do with that sort of market maker that's holding the pre-farm now and what they're using it for, um, you know... I have no idea. I have. I'm not financial at all, so I have no idea how that would be used. Um, the only thing I can think is it may be used to temper volatility in the market um, and just make it seem like things are flowing a little bit nicer and there's no huge, um, you know, sell-offs or whatever. That's the only thing I can think. But you know, let me know in the chat if you know you know exactly what that um, pre-farm amount is being used for on the markets and how how it will affect them um, so yeah things looking looking better you know let's hope it it continues um, you know by no means am I uh, leaving cheer at all I'm carrying on as normal um, I've listened to a few interviews with Gene Hoffman and that and um, I'm still positive about the project so I'm, I'm, st I'm sticking with it um, I may have um, taken my foot off the gas a little bit with regards to spending but I am still spending and I'm going to show you what I'm, I'm spending my money on at the moment and what my plan is to get prepared for the, the halving that's happening next year. So um, another coin that I'm tracking at the moment is Casper. I've got a few Casper in my bag from my GPU mining days, not many at all but that's enjoying a little uh, pump up as well. And then uh, just having a look at the nodes, the node count seems to have gone down. We're at under a hundred thousand now. It was greater than that, I'm sure. Um, so nodes are dropping off, and I've I've noticed the net space has been sort of fluctuating, going up by half a exabyte or or whatever um, during today. Um, another version has come out, 2.11. If you're not aware, 2.11 looked like the release notes stated it only had a uh, a bug fix for. GUI um, on Linux. Um, I applied it anyway, um, just to in case they put anything else in there under the hood. So I'm on 2.11 now on my software client. But let's go to the mining room and have a look and let me tell you about what I'm going to be doing over the next week or so to get myself in better shape. Okay, into the mining room. Racks pretty much as, as it was before. Um, I have done some adjustments to spacing on, with the shelving just to get some more airflow between all of the um, NAS units uh, ready for when they get fired up, which should be pretty soon. 
Um, the only other thing is that I've moved my plotting machine into this room as well and got it a monitor second hand on eBay good price on that and what I've done is taken one of the um, Samsung Evo NVMEs that is uh, sitting in a PCIe slot out of this machine and put it into my main plotting machine and farmer down here which is a Dell 3620 um, and the reason I've done that is because the SSD was struggling in there and I like to use that particular farmer with the plotter um, to plot to my USB drives so it can just slowly do it in the background you know not use a lot of electricity and just build up the farm on some of these um, old 10 terabyte drives that I buy that um, basically cannot go in the NAS units, they can't go in the Netgear ready NAS, I think they only take up to an 8 terabyte with the unofficial upgrade of um, the operating system. So the larger drives I'm at the moment plotting to from that machine down there. This one um, I have been using it to supplement because it can plot with the Mad Max software in about 45 minutes a plot which isn't bad but it does use a lot of electricity. Um, what I've done on the other machine, and that is running here, this is the latest um, client software 2.1.1. Um, I've switched to using Bladebit on this, um, and what I've found is I can get a uh, plot out every hour and a half, and that includes the um, the time to do the final writes to the hard drive in the um, Netgear ready now, it's behind me. So that's not bad, that's better than it was doing before on this machine. So Blade Bit seems to be the way to go for this um, i7 32 gigabyte Dell that I've got down here with that NVMe, NVMe in. So it's a lot faster than it was with the SSD. So I'm quite happy with that because it can, it can go along in the background and create those plots for me onto these additional USB drives I'm getting um, and just do that at a fairly cheap cost. <clears throat> now what I'm going to do with Harry Plotter, um, he's still got one NVMe left inside which should be down there somewhere sitting, no it's on top, sorry, it's on top of the, the graphics card. Um, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do some test runs of creating some compressed plots. Um, I've chosen to go to C7 purely because uh, of electrical costs still higher here in the UK so C7 I'm going to create um, and I'm going to create those to a new second hand drive that is going to go into this Netgear, Netgear unit here that's not operational at the moment start filling that up the plan is that these two bottom Netgear Radinaz units will be plotted with the first suite of C7 plots um, so they should be fairly quick to create because I'm using the 3060 Ti in this machine for that. I haven't done any benchmarks yet but I will be doing them soon and there'll be another video showing you the speeds that I'm getting those plots created. Um, sorry, standard plots from this machine take 15 minutes to copy to the NAS units um, after they've been um, created. Um, obviously the blade bit software does it in its last sort of phase bit by bit which is, is quite good um, so I'm expecting that once I'm creating compressed plots in here obviously they're a lot smaller um, C7s so they're gonna not take that long to copy over so I'm hoping that without any sort of buffer I'm gonna be able to create plots from here onto this um, second hand six terabyte I think it's a Seagate Ironwolf drive um, that I got for a really good price really so I'm um, just going to try that out um, and possibly get some more of those um, when I can afford them um, so that's the plan for this but obviously making compressed plots and housing them on these ready NAS units I need something to decompress them um, and the cheapest way of doing that was to get a, another graphics card to go in the plotter machine that's down here that's currently doing the farming and harvesting um, and that was the GT1030 which uh, supposedly 
has um, you know sufficient CUDA support to work with the Chia software and um, should be able to handle the job quite quite easily so that's what's going to happen next and that's what I'll um, make a video to show you all that in operation so you can see the C7s being created and also being farmed hopefully that's all going to go according to plan um, I'm expecting the graphics card and the hard drive to arrive sometime this week maybe early next week so that could be a video either this coming weekend or um, the weekend after or maybe midweek even I'll see how busy I am so the other thing I've been doing is um, with the various USB drives here based on recommendations um, from people's comments I've just gone through and made sure that um, all the uh, sort of USB hardware is set not to sleep at all so I, we don't want these drives spinning down I was told that that could be a contributing factor to not winning a block if they're doing that so um, all we've got at the moment is these are three ten, 10 terabyte HTSTs which I've been very impressed with I mean I got these for a good price as well 80 quid plus 85 so that's not bad at all the two 16 terabyte Exos drives once again very good and I will be getting a third one to sit in the middle there at some point and then down here in a different configuration because I wanted to try various things especially in the summer to keep things cool this is a, a rack that can hold I think 10 and I've got two 10 terabyte HDSTs in there as well on another uh, USB hub but they're using a different type of connector as you can see they're using a SATA, uh, SATA to USB 3 type connector as you can see there that's got its own power so slightly different option to the um, USB 3 drive bays that I've got here that are running off of a, another USB hub at the back there and they've got their own power as well so um, around about 6 watts per, per drive um, fluctuates between 5 and 6 really um, another thing I've done is that I want to move this unit from here and get it up to this shelf here once I've cleared away some of this junk from GPU mining days um, and I want to do that because it's difficult for me to get to the machine and uh, do maintenance on it um, play around with it so I just want to get that out the way um, obviously limited by the size of the current USB 3 cables so what I did is I went on eBay and bought a number of these which I'll show you in a second when I can get one out a number of these and what these are are extenders USB 3 extenders so same connector at each end so what I'm going to do is buy, I think the best price I've found is on eBuyer. Um, you can get up to a 3 meter USB 3 for about 7 or 8 pounds. Um, I don't need that length obviously, I think um, a meter to 2 meters max I'll buy. Um, just so I can move this unit. So these were like a 5 for each on, on eBay, really cheap. But it's an easy way to extend your USB 3 uh, cabling. So that'll get that out of the way and pump it up top. Um, don't really need to do anything else at this stage. So I'm going to concentrate on, on the plotting job that's coming up and uh, getting this PC behind here upgraded with that GT1030 graphics card. Um, that could prove to be a little bit of a difficult job. Because um, last time I took this machine offline to try a... Um, Quadro, well, what, what I thought was a Quadro K4000, it turned out to be a Quadro 2000, so it was not up to the job at all. It's not recognized by the Chia software because of the CUDA support. But last time I turned this off, it wouldn't turn back on again. And I, I, I lost quite a considerable amount of revenue that day um, because nothing was running. Um, I was, it was a work day for me, and I was. I basically just had to hit it hard at lunchtime and then try and hit it hard again in the in the evening to find out what the problem was and it was the power switch was displaying rather than its white 
um, LED was displaying an orange one and it was blinking in a certain sequence that if you looked it up said that there was a system board failure so I thought brilliant you know I've fallen foul of the uh, one is none two is one rule and uh, didn't have a backup um, so that's something I've got to look up at, look at as well I've got to make sure I've got you know some redundancy here I could have used this bigger machine to my left here to um, fill in um, but it is um, quite electric hungry um, so I didn't want to do that um, but I persevered with it and did a little bit of googling online and it did say that that same problem would manifest if there was a USB issue um, potentially something plugged in that required power and didn't have it or a USB 3 and a USB 2 slot so I checked all the things and um, still wouldn't fire up hours spent on it no joy at all and then just out of the blue once pulling out a few connectors um, it just it just fired up on its own so I'm pretty sure it was to do with USB 3 or USB 2 issues not sure where yet so I'm gonna to have to be very careful when I put this new graphics card in here that I can get this thing started up again um, quite swiftly so um, I'll let you know how that goes um, still a shame to see that sitting on the floor there I'm um, gradually getting rid of the GPUs that I used to have in there mining Casper I don't think it's going to get fired up again um, I'm possibly going to have to sell the motherboard in there that's got um, memory fan and CPU in it it's one of those HTC ones with uh, loads of um, PCIe slots as you can see um, I don't know if I'll get rid of the frame I don't think anyone will want it maybe the fans I can box up again um, they come in packs of five and I've got all the controllers for it so and the boxes so I might be able to recoup a little bit of money off that um, but that's about it anyway for now that's about it um, not much else happening so that's all I can report for the meantime um, so I hope that was informative um, I hope you tune in to watch the next video when I show you the compressed plots and how we're getting on with that um, that's got to move fairly quickly. Um, I need to replot most of the drives in the NAS. Um, I want to get those up to compressed level. Um, and then that farmer down there will just do uncompressed plots, which will be on the USB drives for now. Um, and then I've got to look at getting another PC, ideally rack mount, in here. I would like to put a server in, but I don't know what server to get. I haven't got a clue what I could put in that server. Um, you know, a one unit or a two unit is not going to fit the graphics cards in. It's not going to take the um, the plotting card or the um, farming card, really. Um, so I've got no idea what to do. At the moment, I'm looking for four unit empty enclosures where I can build my own PC in it to do the job and it can sit in here and it will service this net app and the four ready NAS units that are currently in here and that'll just do compressed plots C7 um, that's going to take a while obviously so I would imagine it will be next year before I'll be able to show you what a difference that has made to figures having compressed plots um, and continue, continuing to extend the farm so I hope you've enjoyed that video and um, please give it a, a like if you did, a thumbs up um, and if you haven't subscribed already please do and help the channel um, and hit the bell notification icon so you know when I make that next video. But for now I'll say goodbye.